Hi there. It's probably easier if I let somebody else do the introduction to this. Hello. Right, the London Loop. Um, it's a 140 miles circular route around London. And I have actually done about half of it myself, but it was quite a long time ago. So I can't really remember that much about it or comment on it, how it is to walk today. Um, so what I thought I'd do is to um, ask someone who's walked it more recently and looking on YouTube I found, um, I came across the videos of um, Oatsy40, otherwise known as Richard, who's been blogging about walking the London Loop for several months and so he's very kindly agreed to um, answer some questions about what it's like to walk the loop um, to inform you all and to let you know what it's, what it's all about. So, here are my questions for you, Richard. How long have you been walking it, and how much have you completed so far? That was number one. I've been walking the London Loop now since uh, January 2011, and I've completed 15 out of the 24 sections. Number two, what's the best and worst sections that you've done so far? All the sections I've uh, completed so far uh, all have their uh, uh, good qualities. Uh, however, I've had to pick uh, two sections. Uh, uh, the nicest one I've been through so far is section 19 and the least uh, impressive section is section 7, which was the one I recently did. Uh, section 7 is mostly walking down um, uh, paved uh, streets with houses on them. Uh, not the most exciting of things to look at. However, there were some nice gardens. Um, number three, when I walked it, I just remember what springs to mind is like walking down a lot of canals and golf courses and sort of parks and suburbia. Is that a fair description of what it's like to walk the London Loop or is it, um, is it a bit different to that? What would you say? It is uh, fair to say that there are a large number of public parks and um, uh, suburban streets that you have to go down. However, there is uh, a fair share of uh, countryside, uh, rivers and woods. Uh, a lot of it goes through um, Epping Forest. Uh, I haven't come across many canals yet, but uh, I believe uh, there's a first stretch of the Grand Union uh, that it goes up in uh, West London which is um, what I've got to, to look forward to. Um, number four, how do you find the travelling to the start points and end points on the loop and is navigation along the way easy? Travelling to and from um, the um, start and finish of the walks is um, quite easy because it's all within the travel card zone so uh, uh, there's no worrying about the costs, um, just get a travel card. Uh, and um, once you're actually going for the walks, I would recommend you download the directions and take a map uh, because some of the signage in certain council areas uh, does leave a little bit of desired. Um, uh, one section I got. Um, lost with. Uh, so um, maps are must. Number five, would you recommend it to other walkers um, in London? People who like walking, would you recommend it to them? Yes, I'd definitely recommend the uh, loop walk to uh, other walkers. Number six, do you have a walking goal for the year or do you just go out whenever you feel like it? Do you have, for example, do you have a, a name to finish the loop? within the next few months or something like that? Or what are you up to? I'd be interested to know. Ah, I do have a walking goal for the year. Um, well, my goal was actually to finish the London Loop in a year, um, but because of uh, various factors getting in the way of walking, I'm still doing it <laughs> uh, over a year later. Um, I'd really like to finish it um, by... Easter isn't going to be possible. Definitely by uh, June, uh, otherwise um, <laughs> it's going to take a very long time to do. Um, and then I think I'll do one of the other um, walks around the London area. Um, number seven. 
How do you reconcile living in London with really liking walking? Do you do you feel that there's any problems with that or have you managed to incorporate walking into your life so that you're you're happy with the balance that you've got there living in the city but also going walking as well? How do I reconcile living in London uh, with um, going walking? Quite easy really. Um, you have to plan it a bit more than um, when I used to live uh, in the north of England because uh, it's not exactly on your doorstep. However, because there's uh, far better public transport uh, in the southeast, you actually can get to most places quite easily. Uh, it does take a bit of time though, but um, uh, there are some good walks within the surrounds of London. So I think I've got a fairly good balance of it. And, oh yes, number eight. I really like your uh, video blogs. Um, can you tell us a bit more about how you actually film them, especially when you're out walking? Because I think that you really manage to capture what the experience is like, just, you know, in terms of, for example, you know, people passing by with their dogs or cyclists or whatever. Um, I think it's really good. So how do I film the blogs? Not really um, any special secret to it. Uh, just film... Uh, anything that takes my interest to uh, try and give an impression of uh, of what I'm um, what I'm looking at so vistas and if there is people walking the dogs and uh, cycling uh, for example it sort of adds a bit of action into the feature um, <laughs> seems like Steven Spielberg doesn't it um, no, but basically it's quite simple just film everything and um, edit it down in Use the best bits. And finally, um, how can people find you online if they want to see more of your video blogs or just anything else that you're up to? Feel, please do let us know. So, how can people find me online? Obviously, through my YouTube channel, or uh, they can um, uh, follow me on Twitter, which is at Oatsy40. And thank you so much for taking the time to answer some questions about the loop so that people will know whether they want to walk it themselves or not.